When we change our behavior for the better, the climate responds positively. Here's the latest proof. If the world hadn't banned the chemicals that destroy the ozone layer with the 1987 Montreal Protocol, climate change would have significantly worsened global warming by the 2040s, according to a new study in the journal Nature. The study found that a continued increase in chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs, would have caused the ozone layer to collapse worldwide, which in turn would have led to a rise in ultraviolet radiation showering down on plants and animals. Without the agreement, the study states the tropics would have lost 60% of their ozone coverage by 2100, with mass exposure to unfiltered radiation damaging plant tissues, dramatically stunting their growth and limiting their ability to photosynthesize. According to Science Alert, a hole of that size would be even larger than the one that formed over Antarctica in the early 1980s, with the ultimate effect being that by 2100, damaged forests, soils, and other vegetation would not have been able to absorb a total of 580 billion tons of carbon dioxide. This would make the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere 40 to 50 percent higher. That increase alone would cause global temperatures to rise by 0.8 degrees Celsius or 1.4 degrees Fahrenheit. However, the CFCs themselves are also greenhouse gases, and they would have caused an additional 1.7 degrees Celsius or 3 percent Fahrenheit of global warming by 2100. The total contribution to global warming increases that have been avoided through global commitment to the Montreal Protocol then is 2.5 degrees Celsius or 4.5 degrees Fahrenheit, according to the study. This sentiment matches the sentiment in the recent report by the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. In five previous reports, the world was on track for the hottest scenario, likely to involve temperatures 3.3 to 5.7 degrees Celsius higher than pre-industrial levels by the end of the century. However, this time it is on track for a position between the next two scenarios down, with temperature increases between 2.1 and 4.6 degrees Celsius because of recent progress to combat climate change, according to one report co-author who spoke to the Associated Press. The problem then is not the planet. It responds accordingly when we change our inputs. Rather, as the seawater rises and the ice melts, the problem is us and our continued reliance on fossil fuels. Throughout this 3,000 plus pages in the UN's recent report, it's clear that both the existing circumstances it describes and the future scenarios it sets out are caused by human activity, outlining how greenhouse gas emissions far outweigh natural contributions to global warming. Temperatures have warmed 1.1 degrees Celsius since we started burning fossil fuels on a large scale in the late 1800s, and the UN report explains that this is historically extraordinary, noting that around 125,000 years ago was the next most recent candidate for a period of higher temperature, which was caused by orbital variations. Such clear and unequivocal causation, though, is actually kind of a blessing, because it means that the situation is in our hands. Several recent studies have found that we would find it extremely difficult to stop an asteroid hitting Earth even if we knew it was coming, and even if we had a 10-year warning. The plans for saving us are not yet all that convincing. But climate change seems theoretically much simpler. The UN report ultimately concludes that we can limit humid-induced global warming by limiting cumulative carbon dioxide emissions and reaching at least net zero carbon dioxide emissions, along with making strong reductions in other greenhouse gas emissions just like we successfully did with the Montreal Protocol and its limits on CFCs. Of course, disastrous temperature rises above 1.5 degrees Celsius are likely already locked in, and with them, sea level rises of 15 to 30 centimeters or 6 to 12 inches by 2050, according to co-author Bob Kopp of Rutgers University, who spoke to the Associated Press. But it seems clear from the sentiment of UN climate scientists that the only worthwhile way of thinking is to consider that there are still things we can do to end up in the better climate scenarios rather than the worse ones. Our only other alternatives, either complete denial or nihilistic pessimism, are far more irrational options, and we can already see they lead nowhere good. Two weeks ago, The Guardian reported that climate scientists have detected warning signs of the collapse of the Gulf Stream, one of the planet's main potential tipping points. The research found an almost complete loss of stability over the last century of the currents that researchers call the Atlantic Meridiono Overturning Circulation, or AMOC. The currents are already at their slowest point in at least 1,600 years. But the new analysis shows they may be nearing a shutdown. Such an event would have catastrophic consequences around the world, severely disrupting the rains that billions of people depend on for food in India, South America, and West Africa, while increasing storms and lowering temperatures in Europe. 
The AMOC is driven by dense, salty seawater sinking into the Arctic Ocean, but the melting of fresh water from Greenland's ice sheet is slowing the process down earlier than climate models suggested. The analysis was based on fingerprints the AMOC leaves in surface temperature and salinity patterns. It showed a critical threshold is being reached beyond which the system may collapse. UN Climate Report co-author Kopp and others have called this worst-case scenario unlikely this century, but the point is this, why play with fire when we don't have to?